we've all heard that words have a powerful effect. And I'm not just talking about negativity or speaking life or death. I'm talking about there are certain words in the English vocabulary that can diminish who you are and what you bring to the table, whether that's in your personal life or in business and entrepreneurship. And in today's video, we are going to talk about why you should stop using weak words and tap into luxury language. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. And boy, do I have an amazing episode for you today. In today's episode, we are going to be talking about weak words, luxury language, wealthy words, things that you probably never even heard of before. But this is why I'm bringing you the best of the best because I got my girl, Quinn Conyers, in the building. Not only is she a renowned keynote speaker, but she's a professional event MC and host. She is the author of not one, but two books. And she has spoken on platforms like the United Nations, Sisters in Sales, and she was named as one of the AT&T Dream in Black Future Makers. So please allow me to welcome to the show, Quinn Conyers! Oh, Quinn, 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 thank you so much for joining me and being a guest on the Keandra Jackson Show. Welcome, welcome! Well, listen, I'm excited to be here. Like I told you before, anytime I get an invitation from you, that's an immediate yes. And she did not <laughs> lie, okay? We sent her the invitation and literally five, less than five minutes afterwards, I already would have had her on my calendar, okay? So she did not play about coming on the show and I'm super duper here for that. When I think of, because this whole episode has been about the power of your words, using your words, life and death, you know, you know how we do with that. All of that is so important. And it's not just about doing that in everyday life, but also too in your business. And you have some really powerful alliteration <laughs> that I love about you. So if you don't know, Quinn has been a part of my own personal journey as well. Um, if y'all see that book back there, y'all see that Hard Work or Harmony book right there? She was <laughs> the one who gave me that title. Okay. <laughs> If it wasn't for Quinn, I just did not know what to do in regards to what the title of that next book was supposed to be. So she's a whole verb out here. If you have ever been quinned, you have been quinned. Okay. So in regards to how you show up in this space and how you really hone in on the power of your words, can you share with us a little bit about what this looks like for the old school entrepreneurs who may or business owners who have been in the game for a while, even just some newbies coming on the scene. Can you talk to us a little bit about like the importance of using certain words and not using certain, certain words and how that impacts us overall? Yeah. So I have found that if you're in business, an entrepreneur looking to get started in business or even to scale, that we are really fabulous at first impressions. We look the part, we smell the part, we look like we're running a million dollar business, even if we got two pennies in a bank account, right? Or even if that account is negative, let's be real and honest, right? We look the part. I find that a lot of entrepreneurs, and I first thought this was a, a problem or a challenge that many entrepreneurs struggle with when they were just getting started. But as I've been on my entrepreneurial journey, I have found that it's the second impression that people really struggle with and they really are having trouble with because we look great. And then somebody says, oh my gosh, you look amazing. You're like, thank you. So tell me, what is it that you do? And that's where the problem happens, right? We don't know how to verbalize our value. We don't know how to explain our excellence in a way that turns people on instead of turning people off. Or worse, when we are sharing our business, our product, our service, our coaching program, our course, we are using weak words to explain who we are and what it is that we do. So part of my mission, my calling, and my assignment is to get us more intentional about that second impression, but more importantly, Importantly, getting us to use more powerful words, what I call wealthy words, when we are advocating on behalf of our business, our book, or our brand, because that's the piece that is often overlooked and underestimated in business. Ooh, you said that so beautifully. I never really thought about, because we always talk about first impressions, first impressions, how you show up. I actually did a poll on my YouTube channel in my community tab about like, how quickly do people form first impressions? And it's literally within the first few seconds of meeting somebody that's based on body language, that's based on their appearance, their tone of voice, 
all of those things, but I never really thought about second mm -hmm. impression. Y'all see how good she is? If y'all not taking notes, honey, you need to be taking notes. And she mentioned a few things, weak words. She has this thing called luxury language. And she just said wealthy words. <laughs> is sending me out of here because it really puts things into perspective when you haven't been using words that are wealthy and you've been using words that are quote unquote weak and we're not tapping into the words that we should be using that beautifully expresses what we do who we are and how we can impact the world so can you break down a little bit about what are weak words? What is this luxury language? What are these wealthy words? Like give us some tangible examples of what it is and what it shouldn't be. Yeah, absolutely. So weak words are words and phrases and language that many entrepreneurs unconsciously use to market, position, and promote themselves. So these are words that they feel like are safe. They see nothing wrong with these words. These words, in my opinion, are hurting and hindering their businesses without them even being knowledgeable about it. So it's not something that is hurting them you know, physically. However, when you are constantly positioning and marketing yourself with weak words, the perception on your potential clients is also having a negative impact and we don't realize it. So one of the words that, there's plenty of words, but every time I mention this word, people kind of get themselves all together, right? Because we don't think about it because this word, especially when you talk up to, you know, black entrepreneurs, women entrepreneurs has been very safe, very comfortable. In my opinion, it should be banned from the business dictionary. We shouldn't use it at all. And that word is the word help. And the reason why I explain the word help is because especially as women and minority entrepreneurs, we have been taught to be helpful. We've been taught to help our clients. We've been taught to help someone with our course or helping somebody through our coaching program. And what happens is when women or black people specifically say that they can help, the way the world receives it is differently. Think about it like this. You want to start a business? I can help you. You need your taxes done? I can help you. You want to start your own YouTube show? I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. And what happens is you begin to subconsciously promote and position yourself as the help. So when people come to you, they want your help. They want to pick your brain. They don't realize that there is an invoice attached to your intellectual property. So now you're trying to get them to hire you and they just want your help. And you're trying to figure out why everyone just wants to have a pick your brain session. It's because you're using weak words in your marketing materials. It's because you're using weak word and limited language when telling people how you can provide for them. So what is the alternative? The alternative is using what I call luxury language, wealthier words, more words that you can use to attract premium customers and clients that really elevates the excellence of what you do. So I can help you or I can support you. I can help you or I can partner with you. I can help you or I can support you. I can help you or I can accelerate you. So when you begin to use more wealthier words, it gives a perception to your client or customer that what you do is premium. So when they come to you, they're not gonna try to pay you pennies because you have established yourself as a thought leader and subject matter expert using words and language that really elevates your experience and your expertise. And a lot of women have a tough time doing that. So when if I have a microphone in my hand or if I have a platform, my job is to make sure that you are just conscious of the words that you're using and be more intentional about choosing luxury language, which are wealthy words, instead of using weak words, which I call discount dialect. You just been twinned. If you if you're not aware, <laughs> you have just been twinned. Okay. Like this is Jim after Jim. She had me when she said there is an invoice attached to your intellectual prop. Girl. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, man. Invoice sense. And he's <laughs> okay. Like, there is an invoice attached to your intellectual. If you ain't learned nothing else from this video, please understand that there is value attached to the things that you have to offer into this world. I understand giving some things that may be free or giving some things and giving back and doing community service. But if you are for real, for real entrepreneur, and we were just talking off camera about people who are serious about their business and the things that they have going on, you don't have time to play. 
Facts. You got bills to pay. <laughs> And it costs to show up, you know? And so there's so many things behind the scenes that happens in our business that has to be funded. And when you don't charge your worth and you don't really charge your value, like you are really lowballing yourself and everybody else that you're supposed to be impacting too. And so, girl, you you took me out of here already. <laughs> you took me out of here. Um, I love it. When I, every time I hear you say the help, it reminds me of that video, that movie, excuse yeah. me. It reminds me of that movie called The Help, right? Yeah. Like, and when I think about that movie, I was like, oh, it was a lot going on in there. But I think you make a great point about just Black people and just having, we have been the help since we came over here, <laughs> since we have been enslaved right and so it's like we're just keeping that narrative going for generation to generation I love that it's like you are being the generational stopper for all, for the culture for all of us by saying no we can't say we're the help anymore we're way more than just the help yeah and I think also too it gives us you know I'm, I'm gonna talk about black women for a second because black women are near and dear to my heart we are the fastest group of growing entrepreneurs we are the most educated we start businesses but we are the least funded and we undercharge the most so in my opinion it's almost like not a, a, a nice to have but is it a necessity for us to explain who we are, what we do in a way that's elevated? Because I feel like society, social media, capitalism has continued to put us at the lower end of the totem pole. When really we're advancing, we're breaking records, we're going to college at faster rates, we're starting businesses faster than any other rate uh, race, but we're not getting our due credit and nobody's going to give it to us. Nobody's going to say, you know what, Keandra, you look like amazing. You look like you should deserve $20,000 to speak. No one's coming to us like that. When they say, what is your fee? You have to demand and command that fee, right? So it's like, I think that if more people understand that if they can stand on their experience, they can stand on their education, they can stand on their life experience, that that's a premium right there. And I just feel like it's a disservice and a disrespect to our own greatness when we be like, oh, I can help you when you got two degrees, 75 certificates, life experience, you don't work one job for a decade, another job for three years, another job for seven years, you want to come and you want to talk about something, you want to help somebody? Like... No, I can serve you. I can partner with you. I can accelerate you. I can expand your business because what I know is not helpful. What I know can, is a game changer. And when you begin to start talking with confidence and conviction like that, people start throwing credit cards at you because no one is coming to the table, especially, I don't know, we've just been taught to be meek and humble and get a little pieces of the crumbs of the pie. So when somebody comes in, not even demanding a slice, I want the whole goddamn pie with whipped cream on it. People don't know how to take it, but confidence is contagious, right? So if I'm confident when explaining my offer, my product or my service, you're gonna be like, I need that because most people are not confident explaining who they are and what they do. That is so powerful. Um, I really think that whoever's watching this is their life is going to be changed. <laughs> um, if they're really taking heed to what you're saying and listening, like you have dropped so many gems that there's no way that you can leave this conversation and leave this show, this episode and not implement the things that we are talking about here. And if we catch you saying help, <laughs> <laughs> Quinn, if go for you and I even struggle with this sometimes too like I'll catch myself right because it's yeah. so ingrained in us that I'm like no 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 let me use another adjective here to describe my greatness and so being that I be stalking you on LinkedIn and whatnot <laughs> and be I be using you as example for my speaker coaching clients and I'm like if you want to see somebody who does something well and how they show up on social media mm. go follow Quinn please Please. And the reason why I'm bringing that in is because I seen a post that you did. I think that was two different posts. Um, and it wasn't necessarily um, saying that they were helping someone, but you used the word. Um, I think someone said they were just a mom or, you know, yes. just this or just that. 
And I was wondering if you can share some quick tips on how we can utilize more wealthy words and more luxury language, not just in business, but just in our everyday language in general, and how that can shift our interactions with other people too. Shift your interaction, but also shift your energy and shift your own relationship with yourself. Because I think a lot of times we have a culture that has been very much struggling with self-acceptance and self-esteem, right? So when I hear words like help or I hear words like just, it tells me that the work that you're doing, you believe some way somehow isn't as valuable. You believe that you're not as an asset to society, um, whether whatever that looks like, whether it's a business, whether it's you, you birth humans, you birth humans. That's a big deal. Like when you think like and people, to be honest, don't see it as a big, I'm just a mom. I'm like, do you know what it takes to become a mom? Do you know how many people cannot conceive? Do you know how people who struggle with this, that and the third? So I think part of it is what you mentioned is it's just awareness. There's no magic button that you go, you just automatically start using luxury language. I think when you become more self-aware and you value yourself and the work that you do, you begin to show up different. You begin to describe it different. And sometimes you don't have that perception, you know what I mean, on your own. Somebody else has to give that to you. I'll be very transparent. I didn't know who I was as a powerhouse. I didn't know who I was as a light until other people like you, other people like, girl, that was good. I'm like, really? So at first you don't know what it is. It takes other people confirming and affirming your gift and your greatness. But if somebody tells you the same thing three times, then it's probably right. And we take that from a negative and a positive. So if somebody tells you three times, bro, you're an awesome mom. The fifth person, you shouldn't be like, really? You should be like, you know what? Thank you so much. I worked really, really hard to be an amazing mom to these kids, especially when I want to pull my hair out my head, right? So sometimes it's not necessarily you knowing it and owning it, but if you get a compliment at least three or four times from three people who don't know you, you need to embrace that might be part of your gifting and start using words that really embrace that. And I think that a lot of women, you know what I mean, struggle with finding purpose, not because they don't have it, because T.D. Jake says it best, their genius is in their normal. It comes so normal to them, they don't even see it as a phenomenon. So when I'm talking to you and I'm saying wealthy words and luxury language and intellectual property and invoice, it comes so natural, but the other people have to say, girl, you know, you good with words. And I'm like, really? You know what I mean? So after a while, I'm like, okay, I'm good with words. Let me tap into that. This is the eighth person, the ninth person, the 10th person. Let me now become better. Let me hone my skill. Let me join organizations so I can take my gift from good to great to grand. And many Many people with their gift, they stay at good or great, not knowing that grand is available. I want to operate at a grand level. So even though I have this, I'm still always learning and I'm still a part of community who is sharpening my gift so I can become even better because I know part of my assignment is to serve people. I want to leave a legacy with my language. I want to change the world with my words. I can't do that with a rusty, dusty gift that I got back at birth and I haven't polished and perfected it. Does that make sense? It, absolutely. <laughs> it was a rusty, dusty, and crusty for me. Listen, <laughs> I think you're speaking to something that all of us need, which is tapping into that own internal work that needs to be done, right? So the things that we say is oftentimes indicative of the things that we believe internally. So if we're right. saying we're just a mom, we're just a wife, we're just a, just a, just a, then that means you're minimizing that role, which you've already expressed. We ain't got to, how many kids you got? 12? No, I'm just kidding. Two. Look, two. <laughs> two. And I struggle with that too. You know what I mean? Like, am I being a good mom? You know what I mean? Am I giving them what they need? But a lot of times, some of our insecurities and things that we battle with is something that somebody else told us. You sure she'd be traveling that much with two young kids? And now I'm like, shoot, am I a bad mom? Because I'm pursuing my dream of speaking and like I'm not home with the kids all the time. But if I was a man, would you say that to me as well? So a lot of times it's like, what do you know? You're just a mom. What do you know? You're just an author. What do you know? You're just a whatever, fill in the blank. But I think a lot of times we internalize and we take things as truth that was somebody else's perception of us. You know, so I just try to feel like, okay, but who am I really? Who who do I know? Am I surrounding myself by people who like, let me see who I am? Because a lot of times we don't know who we are. Somebody got to tell us who we are. We don't know. 
And that's so true. I think even to that goes back, especially for the people of faith who are listening. Like I, we did another show, another episode on just like your purpose and knowing, was that the price? <laughs> but just like knowing your, no, that was with Kendra Why he'll let me clear that up. Okay. Um, but just like knowing the thing that God put you on this earth to do, we all have that thing on the inside of us. Whether we realize it and tap into it is a whole different thing. But God did not allow you to come into this earth just to be out here doing nothing. You know what I mean? So it's our responsibility to figure that thing out and to allow us to do what we're supposed to do because we got lives to impact. And when we don't impact those lives, man, you kind of got blood on your hands because you're not showing up and doing and impacting the people that you're supposed to impact. So you're doing yourself a disservice, but others as well. So man, this is juicy. We can talk about this all day mm -hmm. <laughs> because you have, you have opened up people's eyes to a completely different realm that they didn't even know existed. You know, even I'll, I'll give another example to another post that you recently made when you were talking about like disadvantaged businesses, disenfranchised, this, 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 this. And I was like, I never <laughs> thought of it that way. You know, stop dissing us. Stop dissing us. You know what I mean? Like, and I hear it all the time because, and that's why I want to be more intentional about doing the work I want to do within the business world because people don't realize like, these entrepreneurs, whether they're women, minority, Asian, Latino, LGBTQ, veteran, we have been disenfranchised, dis this, dis that, minority, like we've just all these negative labels and then you want us to blossom, we don't trust you. So is there a way that we can describe, you know what I mean, who we are and what we do without using these labels that are disrespecting us? You know what I mean? And people don't even know. Like, I people actually apologize. Like, I didn't even realize it was that. I was like, I know, but part of the words that we're using, but it's just, yeah, I, that's why I want to do more. And also too, back to your point really quickly, as far as purpose, it never goes away. If you are trying to find what you're supposed to do, it's an adjective. It's like, I'm making good money, but something's not right. Like your purpose, like calls you your purpose. It's like, you feel a certain way. It's like, you're not making any money, but you remember how you felt in that moment. You know what I mean? I know I was supposed to speak because I was getting paid negative zero. You know what I mean? Before I was speaking, I mean, I was getting paid with love offerings. If I got that a good, you did a good job, girl. But when I got off that stage, there was a fulfillment. There was an energy. There was a fullness that I couldn't shake. So even when I stopped and I sold purses for a while, it was in the back of my head. It was like, so when you going to get on the platform, <laughs> when you're going to speak again, I'm like, no, 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 no. We talked about this. I'm not speaking anymore because remember people didn't want to pay me. Remember God, we talked about this. I'm just going to focus on selling these purses, but it never went away. So I think when it is, when people say they don't know the purpose, or they're trying to find their assignment when it comes to business, you already know what it is. Either you're scared to pursue it, you know what I mean? Or it's so obvious to others that you just don't see it because it's so normal to you like i can just cook so you made thanksgiving dinner with two ingredients that's what you're telling me like that's a ministry like everybody can't do that you give me two ingredients i'm burning something you know what i mean but you give somebody else two ingredients they got five they got a full thanksgiving spread but because cooking comes so natural to them you know what I mean? They don't see it as a gifting. They don't see it as you could take that and become a personal chef. You could take that and become a caterer. You could take that and start your own food truck. They don't get that. And that's the part that, you know, I, I want people to tap into. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That calling, that purpose, it never leaves you. And it may show up in different capacities, right? We were even talking offline about like how things are shifting for you and you're still doing the thing, but it's just looking different in this season. And so just because it looks different doesn't mean that you're off, doesn't mean that you're wrong, doesn't mean that you're out of alignment. It just means that it's requiring a different level out of you to show up differently. And it's just, it's really interesting to think about because I, even all of the things that I have done, I was just like, I can't, no matter how much I want to not talk about relationships and marriages, <laughs> it keeps calling me. Like, it right. keeps, like that is something that God put on the inside of me for sure. You know, even when people get on my nerves with all these gender wars and men versus women conversation, I'm just like, but I love it, God. Like, it's just there. And so you have to figure out what that thing is for you. Like, what is that thing that's just there no matter what that you need to nurture? Because there's a nurturance that happens that we don't talk about. It's not just like, I wake up and I'm just grand and amazing. But sometimes you got to start 
from the bottom and then build that thing up so it can be something grand as Quinn already mentioned. And you know what's so funny too is I think a lot of things when it comes to your vocabulary, when it comes to your business, it's like we sometimes get married too quickly to something. It's like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm doing. You know what I mean? And then we feel bad for having to rebrand. And I always say, just be in relationship with that thing because you never know how it's going to evolve. But if you was like, I'm married, I'm going to be, you know, this MC, right? I'll take me for example. And I think because we're forced to kind of pick a niche and that's what makes sense in business. But I think you also have to leave some room for, you know, for you to expand because who you were when you first started this business could be different. So maybe in the beginning that you were helping people, I'll give you that. In the beginning, you were absolutely helping people. But now you two decades in, sis, you're not helping no more. You are a certified expert. When you first started off, you didn't finish college yet, right? When you first started, you know what I mean? Like you could not be a parent expert because you had one fur baby and your baby was one. Now your baby is 16. I, you can talk about it now. You are absolutely an expert. So I think it's like we have to give ourselves permission to evolve. We have to give ourselves our language to evolve, but also you got to give your confidence a chance to evolve as well, because all of those go in tandem to create who you are um, and how you can excel, especially as an entrepreneur and especially as an entrepreneur who is using their voice to grow their business. And if you are an entrepreneur, your voice is very much a marketing strategy in your business. And you just wanna be intentional about using wealthier words to attract those clients versus using words that are dismissive or words that are weak that really don't talk about the greatness of what it is that you do. Mm. Yeah, I, you summed that up beautifully. I think your words matter. And I know we hear that all the time, but you also hear the words that you say, right? It's not just you're putting it out there, you're putting it on social. It's like you hear the words that come out of your own mouth, you hear those too. So you oftentimes internalize that same this, 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 that, or just this, just that, help that, help that. You're internalizing that. And then if we think about that legacy, even if that's the next line of business owners or the next line of children that you might birth, you are showing them either something positive <laughs> or something negative, right? And it's important for us to be that example. And I want my legacy in this world, in this space. And even if I have children of my own, because I don't have any now, I want them to be like, nah, my mama... <laughs> My mama was that girl. My mama was using all the luxury language and the wealthy words and she showed up to the best way that she knows how. And so when I know that you have so many amazing resources, I actually had on Quinn's shirt yesterday. I should have wore it today. You should have wore it today. I <laughs> read. Yes. I love my Speak Black Woman shirt. Every time I'm in the store, walking around or just out people are always like I love your shirt I love your shirt and I'm like period <laughs> <laughs> right um Quinn has some amazing resources not only does she has merch shirts she also has a luxury language checklist that we will put in the description in the comment section so you guys can tap into it she also has an amazing book she is an author so Quinn let the people know how they can stay connected with you because baby I know they will want to yeah, absolutely. So like you said, um, I know that you're going to put the, the link in the show notes. I think the first thing to do is get your luxury language list. We talked about just, we talked about help, but there are other words that you should not be using when promoting and positioning your business. And I want to make sure that you have those because a lot of times it's about being aware. Most of us didn't even realize there was something wrong with saying the word help until you had this conversation with me, right? So that's what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and take advantage, go to the show notes, download that luxury language list. That way you can have wealthier words in your pocket, but more importantly, you can be aware of the words that you should not be using in business. Also stay connected with me. Um, I like to play on LinkedIn. It's my favorite spot. It allows me to connect and engage with people on a deeper level. I do love all the other social media platforms, but business happens on LinkedIn. So if you are on LinkedIn, definitely connect with me there. If you're not, I am on Facebook, Instagram as Quinn Conyers. But what I really want to leave with with it is get that luxury language list because I've had people really talk about, you know what, I was helping for a while, but now to thanks to you, I'm now accelerating. And the way they even said it, you could see the boost of confidence because describing who you are and what you do 
is one thing, but knowing who you are and what you do and not having the right words to explain it can become frustrating. So part of what I want to do as a gift is to make sure that you're at least aware and you can begin to start using more luxury language in your business and also your everyday life. The key word is business and everyday. Y'all know I both right. and, okay? Not either or, both and. So Quinn, thank you so much for being an expert on the Keandra Jackson Show. However, you can't leave my presence without playing a fun game. Are you down okay. to play a game with me? Yes, ma'am. Let's do it. So we are going to play a game called This or That. And that is called the lightning speed round. So that means you got to give me your answers quick. You can't okay. be waiting 20 years to, to figure out which one it is. So I have 10 here for you. Are okay. you ready? I'm ready. Perfect. So the first one is Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. We on YouTube, so you know she had to say <laughs> The second one, calls or texts? Text me. Okay. Shower or baths? Shower. Eating at a restaurant or cooking at home? Eating at a restaurant. Qu Quinn! <laughs> okay. A long drive or a long walk? A long walk. Okay. Music or podcast? A podcast. She took a long time on that one, y'all. She had to think. I had to think about it. I had to think about it. <laughs> you said podcast? Mm-hmm. That is surprising to me. Oh, yeah. okay. Gold or silver? Silver. What you got on right now? Gold. Don't. It's Love giving me. gold. She lying, y'all. She lying to us. <laughs> Okay, now this is going to get a little, maybe rated R. Okay, dirty underwear or no underwear? Oh, no draws. <laughs> none. <laughs> like, that was easy. No choice. Yeah, yeah, none. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine, keynote or MC? Keynote. Keynote, okay, okay, okay. And last but not least, High heels or sneakers? Sneakers. <laughs> that was a good one. I like that one. I like that. That was fun. Because if you don't know Quinn, one thing she's going to do is rock some sneakers on stage. Baby does not wear heels. Okay. She said, my feet are not about to be hurting. Okay. Oh, I'm yes. going to be comfortable. Yes. I love this. Thank you so much for being an amazing guest on my show. You already know I'm going to have to have you back again please, please, for a please. part two, but thank you so much for joining me. Did she not drop gym after gym after gym after gym? I knew that Quinn was going to bring the fire. As I already mentioned, you have officially been Quinned. But on top of that, I just hope that there was something that I said or that she said that is going to be life-changing for you. Knowing that your words have power and some are strong and some are weak and some are wealthy and some are luxurious, it changes how we show up in the world. It changes the things that we say and it changes the things that we allow other people to say about us. Yeah. So from now on, I want you to assess the words that come out of your own mouth. I want you to assess the things that you say about yourself, your kids, your legacy, your business, and so on and so forth, because you are so much more than just the help. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.